Whitetail Addictions. The hunt is on. There's no going back now. It's in your blood. A primal need that must be met. It drives you. It consumes you. It takes you to the edge. What was once a simple pastime has now become your addiction. This season, come share the excitement with a group of fellow whitetail addicts from Lone Wolf. Learn from their time-tested techniques, as well as their mistakes, and be there to experience firsthand the highs and the lows we've all come to thrive on. They are do-it-yourselfers just like you. Their season begins the moment the last one ends. And when it comes time to release an arrow, God! they come up big. This is Lone Wolf's Whitetail Addictions. This week's Whitetail Addict, Sean Bell, is in hot pursuit to the Buckeye State to capture a big Ohio whitetail on video. One week later, we find Sean staked out along a river bottom waiting to put the sting on an elusive Central Illinois buck. And you're definitely not going to want to miss some of the rarest footage we've ever captured on film. The Finger Lakes region of southern New York is home to NASCAR's Watkins Glen Racetrack. It's also wine country and just happens to be the soaring capital of the world. In the quiet little town of Elmira, we find this week's whitetail addict, Sean Bell, patrolling the streets of this sleepy little town. Might turn out to be a pretty decent night. So yeah, this is just part of the job. It's, uh, it's just one of them things we have to do. I don't necessarily like doing it, but it's just part of the job. I don't like it nearly as much as I like shooting big bucks. Whitetail hunting is all I think about. Look at those birds right there. How cool is that? One, two, three, three strutters, four strutters when I'm working, when I'm at home. It's all I've ever done. It's the only hobby I've ever had that I really have a true passion for. And for me, there's there's just no, there's just no better excitement. Unlike New York City, the countryside of Elmira is teeming with wildlife. White tails are the ultimate challenge. Um, big mature bucks. You know, I guess for me, the whole thing is just the game. It's the, it's the I mean, the beginning of my season is January, and for me, it's just figuring out what that deer is going to do, when he's going to do it, and, you know, when you can go into a mature buck's core area and figure him out and try and outwit him, and, you know, more times than not, he beats you, but just that one time that you're in the right place at the right time and all the scouting and all the homework you've done and all the preparations with the equipment and all that stuff. And when that all comes together, there is no better feeling. That is, that is definitely why I'm addicted to whitetails. New York isn't exactly what you'd call a big buck hotspot, but that hasn't stopped Sean from putting some nice bucks on the wall. Well, these are some of the deer that I've taken in my home state of New York. This one right here by far is probably my biggest. Um, he grosses in the high 150s. Um, he's just a great deer, he's got everything. Um, this one here, I shot a couple years later. This one's in the high 140s, got a lot of character. He's got a start of a third main beam, kickers, he's got weevil hole, he's got it all. This one is just a real, he's just a great eight pointer. Just real clean. Um, shot that one up north uh, with a buddy of mine. 
but uh, people don't really think we have big deer in New York. But uh, you know, you get out there, and I mean, anybody that knows me will tell you I spend 365 days a year scouting for these things. So it's been a lot of work, but it's also been a lot of fun, and this is why I'm addicted to whitetails right here. Hunting has been such a huge part of my life, and you know. The number one person I got to thank for that is my father. He got me started so young, and uh, he worked really hard, but he always found time to take me out in the woods, whether it was hunting or fishing, or it didn't matter. You know, if he had time, he always made sure he got me out there, you know, in the outdoors. And, you know, I have him to thank for that. I mean, I don't know what I would have done the last 20 years of my life for a hobby, um, but, you know, hunting is the number one most important thing to me and you know I've got my father to thank for that if it wasn't for him I don't know what I'd be doing right now here's this week's whitetail hunting tactic with Andre DeQuisto you know you've heard about over hunting a stand and I hear this all the time um, I don't want to over hunt it I didn't want to pollute it so I backed out here you are on a monster buck he's red hot he's working scrapes he's chasing does and you back out of there because you don't want to burn it up. I mean, you, you rush in and you seize those moments. And if you blow it, you blow it. Sometimes I got a kick out of guys hunting your old sign. You know, I'm in there right when it's going down during the season, scouting, reading sign, going in, trimming up an area, setting up in an ambush. The difference is, is that it's, it's what I call a virgin sit. I'm in there, I've done all that, that deer doesn't know what's happened yet. That first time in or through there, he's gonna realize that somebody's been in there and messed it up, but it'll be too late. So it's either the deer I want or it's not, and I let him walk and then I move on. Sean's addiction led him to Ohio for an early season hunt during the 2005 season. But it wasn't until the last night of his hunt when he would finally get the break he was waiting for. As this mature buck enters the field, Sean knows he will take this deer if given the opportunity, even though his right antler is nothing more than a big palmated club.
The younger bucks in the field want nothing to do with the big non-typical as the whole group starts heading right for Sean. While the big buck shows his dominance, he ends up chasing the smaller bucks right under Sean's stand. The big non-typical didn't make it 70 yards before piling up. And just as quickly as he hit the ground, another mature buck approached the fallen deer. prettier color than red. Black and broadheads have done it again. Is that not incredible? He might not be the most symmetrical thing, but he is definitely going on my wall. We had 11 bucks, including this one, come out into that field, and they just started fighting and fighting, and finally, they walked across this bean field. We thought they were gonna get around on us, and another little buck come through that opening and jump through that fence, and when he did, this one got a little upset at him. He's kinda in his turf, and he come right down, brought him right in. 22, 23 yards max. Put a great shot on him, he didn't go 75 yards. Can you believe it? Justin Hollinsworth, I'm with uh, Lone Wolf Custom Gear, and I've been a long time Lone Wolf guy. I've been hunting out of the Quisto Series stands for almost 20 years now, and, um, and I was really excited this year with all of our new stand sticks cameras and now with our bow that Darton is uh, designing and putting on for us. This is the new uh, Lone Wolf Custom Gear Lobo. It is uh, 33 inches axle to axle. It's got a six inch brace height. It's 80% let off. And um, with my whole hunting setup, um, we are shooting about 310 feet per second. Um, feels really good in the hand. It's got the same coating, the soft touch technology that is on our stands and sticks, along with um, everything that everybody's always come to know what Lone Wolf is all about. It is um, actually, I've been a little reluctant on shooting a, a different bow. I've only shot one manufacturer for, for probably the last 15 years. And I can tell you this bow is more forgiving. It's faster. 
Um, my groups are tighter and um, I'm really looking forward to uh, hunting with it this year. One week later, Sean was back in his lone wolf tree stand overlooking a picked corn field in central Illinois. As the cruising buck skirts past, just out of bow range, Sean tries to call the hefty buck back into the field. But the only response he gets is from this smaller eight point. Later that day, in the same stand, Sean hoped to get another look at the buck that passed just out of bow range earlier that morning. We have worked so hard for that deer. I can't believe we just did it. It's November 10th. We hunted this stand this morning. Saw three or four different bucks. He wasn't one of them. Oh, he's a beauty. He's <laughs> big. Thanks, man. That's a good one. That's a good one. That might be my best buck ever, gun or bow. I whacked him. <laughs> that is number two white tail and one bear for me with those broadheads. And he didn't go 24, 50 yards. 50 yards and he's laying there. I'm gonna get unstrapped from this tree. I'm gonna put my horn hunter pack on and I'm going to see that deer. Stop shaking. This ain't the best feeling in the world. I don't know what it is. My lucky stand. One to bury eight in Canada. What happiness to a bow hunter? Right there. The same arrow. I shot my journal hours. about that that's awesome he might not be the biggest deer we've seen this week but I'm really proud of him it's my first Illinois deer it's my second this is only the second deer I've ever killed on video what a great buck what a great looking buck lone wolf's white tail addictions will be right back
Sean had a very successful deer season this past fall, harvesting two great bucks with his bow in Ohio and Illinois. I'm sure this will only add to Sean's addiction. And who knows, maybe Sean will be back in Ohio this fall looking for a particular eight point with a really bad attitude.